Welcome to Red Dot Camera Talk. My name is Lewis. Today we're in Wynwood, Miami's Arts District, shooting with the Leica SL. I'll be using the SL 24-90 and some M lenses and seeing how they perform in this urban type of environment. It's very good, look, that's awesome. <laughs> it's fine. What's your name? Kate. Katrina. Kate? Katrina, where are you from? Belarus. <laughs> you did it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a good day, good luck. <laughs> you guys look awesome. Cheers. You can't be a bakery in Miami without having a batalita de guayaba. Like, that's just the way it is. We just finished having lunch with Zach the Baker. This place makes some of the best bread that I've ever had. Uh, I'm gonna be shooting the M lenses with the SL uh, to take advantage of how compact they are in a place as confined as this. Okay, I'll get a nice portrait of you here, look good. Nice. <laughs> Come on, look at that. <laughs> wow, that is actually amazing. I told you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you're manual focusing. Uh, with this one, since it's a manual focus lens, I'm doing the aperture and stuff like that. Okay. But really, it's just aperture priority. So you set your aperture. So as we were shooting, uh, we started to attract the crowd, uh, thanks to the little red dot on the camera. Uh, we actually have a lot of photography enthusiasts here at uh, Zach the Baker, and they very much love the fact that we're shooting SLs and like us. So I've been shooting with the 35 Lux and I'm actually going to switch over to the 90, get a little bit more tele. This is actually the longest lens that I brought today, but it's still about half the size of the 24 to 90, so that's a plus. And uh, besides that, I get F2, which is also a very, very big plus. Look at that, look at that. With the longer lenses, I find myself constantly using the uh, back button zoom to check for focus. It's just a little bit easier, especially with a shallow depth of field. So I wasn't able to go back into the kitchen, but by using the 90, I can get a little bit of a closer shot. Focus time is definitely a little bit longer since the 90 has a much longer throw. But it's worth it. That was a nice shot that I just got. It's a lot of color, uh, grab black splatter there. Let me uh, take a quick photo of you, nice portrait, is that all right? All right. What's your name? Bernie. Bernie, that's a great name. Thank you, Bern. Using the M lenses, you have to focus 100% of your mentality on one focal length, Well, which is fine if, if, if that's your thing, uh, but in this situation where you're tight, it's kind of difficult to get the right shot without bumping into a million things or a million people. Uh, so that's somewhere where the 24 to 90 would probably come in handy. Right, we're going to switch back to the 35 Lux. I'm much more comfortable at the 35 than pretty much any other focal length. So we're going to do a quick environmental portrait of Zach in the kitchen um, using the 35 instead of the 50, get a little bit more of the kitchen. A little, little bit of a smile though. There you go. Dude, thank you, man. Hey, I really appreciate it for real. Seriously. My pleasure, guys. Thank you. So, I've switched over to the 24 to 90. We're actually going to go to the walls and shoot. Let's go.
right off the bat, one of the biggest things you'll notice is how much bigger the 24 to 90 lens is. Um, it adds about two pounds of weight, but with that two pounds comes flexibility that's absolutely awesome. Uh, 24, great for street photography, great for the murals here out in Wynwood. 90, great for portraits. It's, it, it absolutely redefines the one camera, one lens Leica mentality. Um, being a Leica shooter my entire life, the fact that I have the flexibility of a 24 to 90 is great. Uh, Wynwood Walls is actually one of the best places to come shoot in Miami. It's a great backdrop for portraits. Um, if you want to shoot just art, it's, it's absolutely great. The 24 to 90 offers you awesome flexibility, especially in a place like this. Plenty of light, plenty of colors. You get to experience everything that the lens has to offer. The biggest, biggest, biggest plus side of having the 24 to 90 is the fact that I can stay in one spot and grab all the shots I need. That might sound lazy, but it actually comes in handy in a place as big as this that gets very busy. It allows me to sit back and get the shot I need to get, which is an advantage when you have a lens this big. The lens this big can be a little bit intimidating when, when you're in front of people. So being able to stand back a bit and grab the shot definitely helps. I like that one. The 24 to 90 is such a great solution. If it wasn't for the fact that I needed four M lenses to match up to the 24 to 90 focal length, I wouldn't even need this bag. And with the Miami heat right now, it's definitely not necessary. Here's something you can't do with an M lens. Single-handed shooting. Definitely comes in handy when you're trying to be low key. The autofocus is quick, silent, awesome. One of the best things about the SL lens, which is kind of obvious, is the fact that it does have autofocus. Uh, the autofocus is faster than manual focus depending on the situation, but besides it being faster, it's a lot more convenient. Bringing the camera up to my eye, focusing, shooting, all in half a second, never lose a shot. I was just in a situation where I was zoomed into 90, I recomposed the shot at around 75 and I realized that it was a much better shot. Uh, and I could not have done that if I was using M lenses. With the M lenses, I would have had to go into the bag, swap the lens out, and I would have lost the shot. So right there, 2491, M lenses zero. Thank you, no, you're good, you're perfect. Getting a nice portrait without having to get close to the subject, it's definitely a plus. I like to shoot my autofocus uh, at single point. Uh, the camera does have a 49 point focus area, but single point to me is a lot better. Uh, using the joystick here on the thumb helps with moving the focus point. I don't have to recompose my shot. I'm definitely relying on the autofocus, but that's the reason to have an autofocus camera. One of the biggest plus sides of the SL lens is how close you can actually focus to your subject. Uh, at the wide end, at 24, you can actually go up to about 0.3 meters and at 90, about 0.45 meters. And compared to the M lenses, we're about 0.7 at the, the closest focusing one. It's a definite advantage for the SL lens. Zooming it into 90 and testing its pseudo macro ability. Awesome.
the 90 is so great for isolating stuff. I, I absolutely love how close I can get, um, how, how close it focuses, and the fact that I don't have to move from where I'm at. That's a dope shirt, and I really appreciate this. Thanks, man. What's your name? Tim. Tim Lewis. Pleasure to meet you. You too. Right, so I started the portrait at a 50, which is a pretty solid focal length. Uh, I, I zoomed in a bit and I decided to recompose that around the 75, and I actually got the shot that I loved. The reason why I'm, I'm talking about recomposing and, and moving is because had I wanted to do that with the M, the subject, which I met on the street for the first time, would have gotten annoyed, would have walked away had I had to change lenses. 24 to 90 definitely came in handy in that situation. I've been carrying it for a little while now and I, I personally don't like to shoot with neck straps, but the 24 to 90 does add a little bit of heft to the front end of the camera and that unbalanced weight kind of tires out your uh, wrist a little bit, but besides that, it's pretty good. Uh, so after shooting the 24 to 90 for a bit, I decided to go back to uh, the 24 Elmar. That was a failed shot right there. Super failed. Let's go shoot the ice cream truck. Echa! Billete? Billete? I love this city. Ice cream trucks, the guy flashing cash. There's nothing like Miami. Even though I'm stuck at one focal length, the fact that I've shed all of that weight from the 24 to 90 kind of makes it worth it. Uh, plus this 24 Elmar is tiny and, and extremely sharp. I love this little lens. So here's the only issue with changing lenses without a strap. And that's dealing with the hassle. Definitely not something I have to worry about when shooting with the 24 to 90. Here you go. That's what's up right there. What's your name, man? Appreciate it. After spending a day out shooting with the 24-90 and M lenses in Winwood, I have to say that they both go well hand in hand. Uh, they each have their definite advantages. Can I say that one is better than the other? Not, not really. The 24-90 gives me autofocus, near macro, extreme flexibility. It, it really does become a one lens, one camera solution. Uh, but where the 24-90 falls short, the M lenses excel. Okay, they're much more compact, they're much lighter, and, and they really perform well in low light. Uh, as an SL shooter, pairing your 24 to 90 with M lenses really rounds out your system. All in all, I had a great time shooting the SL. The camera is quick, responsive, and the image quality is fantastic. It's truly a fun camera to shoot. Thanks for watching. Click the link below to subscribe for more videos like this. If you like what you saw, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you got any questions, leave a comment. Stay tuned for the next video. I know you're recording me.